today, what a uh, very important day in the ministry and history of the church. We have recognized and celebrated All Saints Sunday for many, many years in the church, and today we remember those saints that have gone before us since last All Saints Sunday. It is good to see every one of you here this morning. There are many, many announcements and uh, ministries and activities and other things uh, in the bulletin today, so please take a look at that as well as newsletters have gone out. If you are not on the list for the newsletter, please let us know and we'll make sure that you receive a newsletter. Um, it, it, there are many things here, especially um, for the, this week coming up. We have a very special day on Wednesday at Wednesday at 2 o'clock. The Chamber of Commerce will be here to uh, do a ribbon cutting ceremony for us for the renovations on the Asbury Center with our new service as well as uh, to recognize the renovations for the children and youth halls. So uh, we look forward to that and hope everyone that can can be come and be in attendance at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. I want to call on Helen Shore to come and share with you about the exciting things that the United Methodist Women are doing. Good morning. Next Sunday, November the 8th, is a special Sunday for the United Methodist Women. We're going to serve a lunch of soup, salad, and cornbread in the Fellowship Hall after the 11 o'clock service. There will be no charge for our lunch. However, you know we welcome donations. In addition, from 9 o'clock through lunch, the Fellowship Hall will display all kinds of baked goods, treats, and craft items. If you want a pie for Thanksgiving or an early Christmas gift, then here is your chance. So start off the holiday season early by helping us out. All proceeds from the sale will go toward our UMW missions, both local and worldwide. For those of you donating things for this fundraiser, and all people are welcome to donate things, please bring them to the Fellowship Hall from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock this Saturday. Again, Saturday 11 to 3 for drop-off. If that is not possible, you can bring them to the church uh, office and label them. <clears throat> if you could price your special items for us, that would be a great help. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. All right, thank you, Helen, and thank you for all you do in your leadership of the Methodist women and all that uh, they are doing here at First Church and uh, many places across the world. The United Methodist women are a strong force in our society. They have done many things throughout the history and continue to be a, a voice for justice and to work hard to help others in need. So the, for that, we give God great praise and hope that you'll come and support them next Sunday. At this time, let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. Will you stand and let us sing together hymn number 117, O God, our help in ages past. faith as contained in both the Old and New Testament. You can find the Apostles' Creed on page 881 in your hymnal. Let us now say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
now let us join together in responsively reading Psalm 24. You can find that on page 755 and 756 of your hymnal. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world knows well therein. For God has founded it upon the stars. And established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Who do not lift up their souls to love his thoughts. And do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord. And vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord. And seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, and that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's word. As we call the roll call of the saints, of those that have gone before us since last All Saints Sunday, family members or a family member are invited to come and light the candle. And if you have a... uh, want to remember this person because of your special relationship with them, we'd ask that you would stand where you are seated when their name is called. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you as we call the names of these saints. And we ask, Lord, that your presence and your power be fully known. Lord, we thank you for each of these persons, for what they have meant to each of us and to your church. We ask, Lord, that we will honor them this day as we glorify you. We thank you, God, for the gift that they have been to each of us and for the gift of eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for your church here on earth and the church triumphant. Lord, we give you great praise for your presence this day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now hear the naming of the saints. Mildred B. Hughes. Bill E. Burgess. Louise D. Talbert. Ruth S. Burgess. Joan H. Shackelford. Reverend Mark E. Jordan. Dorothy J. Case. Carolyn C. Phillips. Mm -hmm. 
Ivy G. Manus. Doris S. Eichelberger. Hilda Van M. Buller. James Jim Reed Campbell. Edith T. Covington. Wilda B. Kearns. Evelyn C. Conan. Robert Bob Aldridge.
Martha H. Chamberlain. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you great thanks for these saints, your people. We thank you, God, for their memories that live on, the love that they have lives on, that they have given to each of us, the love that we have for them and from them through you. We thank you, God. Help us so to live to honor them and to glorify you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we go to God in prayer, we have others on our hearts as well today as we uh, lift up others in prayer. Bill Trogdon will have surgery tomorrow morning, and uh, so if you'll be in prayer for Bill. Also pray for uh, Linda DeFries, who will also be having surgery in a few weeks. Also, uh, lift up, we lift up the family of Leslie Winslow. This is Mary Wilhoyt's father. His service will be conducted this afternoon at Central United Methodist. On the flowers today um, are placed today in loving memory of Daniel Westcott Moser, who is a lifelong member of this congregation whose birthday is November 4th by Missy and Sam Rankin. We also have celebrations. The rosebud on uh, the altar today is placed there to welcome Lucas Anthony Calicut, who was born October 29th. This is the son of Lori and Harvey, which we give God great praise for the gift of Lucas's life. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, you have been faithful. You have been faithful to us and to your saints, your saints here on earth and the saints in heaven. We give you great praise for loving us, for being merciful and just, for reconciling us to you and to one another. We thank you, God, that we can walk in peace and in love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you are our only hope. <clears throat> Teach us to put our trust in you. You are our only help. Teach us the path of righteousness and turn us from the ways of wickedness. Lord, we want to love justice. We know that you love those who do justice. Help us to do the same. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, who is righteous and just, you watch over all of us and you lift us up. You provide for our every need and you are always faithful. For that we give you great praise. You never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, God, that you're always with us, watching over us, guiding us, helping us to do as you want us to do, to be who you want us to be. Help us to give our lives to you, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the church. We pray for the church here in the city of Ashboro, for each church, that we might execute justice, feed the hungry, watch over those in need. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and your feet in this broken world. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those who are alone, who are weighed down, who are captive by suffering. Help us to be their keeper so that they might be lifted up. Use our hands, our feet. Use our words. Use whatever that we have that comes from you. For all that we have is yours. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those who suffer in body or mind or spirit, especially for those that have upcoming surgeries, those in hospitals and hospice. We ask God for your presence and your power. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up all the saints, the saints here among us this day, those saints in our families, the saints that have gone before us, And in our hearts, we lift them up to you. We ask, God, that you continue to remind us, to honor them, to glorify you, that as we go forward in life, may their precious memory be forever part of who we are. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up everything in our lives to you, our hearts, our souls everything about us, all within us. For we love you, God, through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All praise and honor are due you, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This time we invite the children to come forward for the children's time. Seeing the bounty that God has made for our good use, let us now give our tithes and offerings for the sake of the church and for the sake of those in need. Let us worship God with God's tithes and our offerings.
You may be seated.
Amen, indeed. We are certainly worshiping with the communion of the saints this day. Our gospel today comes from the gospel of John. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. Mary and Martha had different expectations than uh, what Jesus wanted them to see. They had prepared themselves for a healing. They had prepared for Jesus to come and to do a healing, but not for a resurrection. They knew that Jesus could heal. Jesus had healed many times in their sight. They knew that Jesus could have healed their brother, but Jesus had delayed in his coming, and Lazarus had died. They had prepared Lazarus' body and placed him in the tomb. There, They had little expectations from Jesus at this point. And Mary complained, If only you had been here, Lord. If only you had been here, then my brother would not have died. Yes, she is overcome with grief, so we can understand her accusation. She is deeply grieved for her brother. The sisters did not expect much more from Jesus, just a simple healing. That's all they wanted was a simple healing. But now that Lazarus was dead and buried, they didn't expect anything more. When Mary and Martha accuse Jesus and tell him that Lazarus had died, he begins to cry. Jesus weeps. There's been a lot of ink spilled over this one little passage, this one little scripture. A lot of people, different scholars say that it means different things. The Greek word for cry here is something of a deep groaning cry. You know that cry from the deepest part within us when we lose a loved one? Our families today know that deep cry, that groaning, that cry from the deepest part of us, the deep sor- sorrow. Jesus knew it too. Some scholars assert that Jesus is upset because even his closest followers did not understand what he could do. Even his closest followers had little expectations of him. What are your expectations of Jesus today? Do we expect only certain things for Christ? Do we expect him just to do certain things for us? Christ will far exceed any expectation that we have. Jesus tells them to roll back the stone. Roll back the stone and let 
show you what God can do. Roll back the stone and let me do my Father's work, he says. Roll back your expectations today. Let us roll back our expectations and let Christ amaze us because, you see, Christ will do more than we ever expect. When Mary and Martha complain that Jesus missed the opportunity to do something for their brother, Lazarus, who Jesus loves so much, Jesus responds as usual in great understanding. Martha, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? If we believe, Jesus promises that we will see the glory of God. The saints that we have called out today, the saints in our lives that have gone before us in the church triumphant, have seen the glory of God, so too will we. If we only expect and only understand, if only we believe, says Jesus. This table today has been set, has been set for you and for me, but not without a price. I think sometimes we take the privilege of coming to the table as something that we as good Christians just simply do. Many things we take for granted in the world. We come with little expectations. Sometimes we forget the sacrifice that was made for us to be able to come to this table, the privilege to come to this table today. What do you expect when you come to the table? Come and expect to see the glory of the Lord. Come and expect to see God with us right here. Come today to this table Commune with the saints, the saints here on earth, the saints that have gone before us. Come to the table today with great expectations to see God's glory, for Christ is present here to give you love, to love us, and to give us grace. Come with great expectations. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you'll take your hymnal and turn to page 12. Join me in the invitation, the confession, and the pardon. Please stand as you are able. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, 
God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints. And since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at, the he at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our communion stewards to come forward. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the same loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Body of Christ broken for you, Amy.
table is set and it is ready for you to come and receive. The ushers will direct you. You'll come down the center aisles and return towards the wall. As you come today, come and uh, with great expectations that Christ is here to forgive you, to love you, to reconcile you to him and to one another. As you come today, know that his love is deep and covers everything in your life, everything about you. As you come today, come and know that he is here. There is a gluten-free station in the center if you need that.
Now, if you'll please join me in the prayer after communion as printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant in the strength of your spirit we may give ourselves for others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Now, if you'll please stand as we sing our hymn of response for all the saints on page 711. of the power of Christ in this world. 
And may the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen.